have poured out grace You brought me out of darkness You have filled me with your peace Giver of mercy You're my help in time of need Lord, I, I can't help but sing Sing faithful, come on Faithful, you are always Lord. Faithful, forever you will be. Yeah. Faithful, you are all your promises. All your promises are yes and amen. All your promises. All your promises are yes and amen. Yeah, every one of them. Beautiful Savior, sing this out. Beautiful Savior, you have brought me near. You pulled me from the ashes, you have broken every curse. My blessed Redeemer, you have said, is happy free. But I, I can't help to sing your faithful. Faithful, you are, forever you are. My confidence is your faithfulness, and I will rest. And all your promises, my confidence <laughs> is your faithfulness. Sing it up. I will rest. Yes, I will. In your promises, my confidence. Faithful, one more time, and I will rest in your promises. My confidence, Jesus, is your faithful. Let's sing faithful, come on. Thank you for the promises of God that are yay and amen. And today I want you to just enter in today. Leave all your cares at the door. <laughs> and let's rest in God. Slip on over into the inner court. You know, you might be in the outer court, but it's time to come on into the inner court. And press into God and receive what he's got for you. The glory of God is here today. So receive his glory today. Amen. Come on, let's worship him. Glory. 
stand. We put on that garment of praise tonight, God. We sing this. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. <laughs> we raise it. I raise a hallelujah, my weapon, my weapon is a melody, I raise a hallelujah, heaven comes to fight for me, yeah, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, louder we're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive i raise a hallelujah with everything with everything inside of me, I raise a hallelujah. I will watch, I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah. You hold on me, I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar, up from the ashes, hope will arise, death is defeated, the king is alive. Sing a little louder, here we go. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Oh, sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Oh, sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Hey, sing a little louder. In the presence of Sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. Oh, sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder. Heaven comes. Sing that again. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. Oh, sing a little louder. sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder we're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise the death is defeated the king is on my time so i'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder Praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. The death is defeated. The king is alive. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. 
going to raise it, Lord. We're going to raise our praise, Lord. Up from the ashes, Lord. Let hope arise in us. Give us a supernatural shot of vitamin D tonight, Lord. <laughs> Amen. I am holding on to faith Because I know you make a way I don't always understand And I don't always get to see But I will believe it And I will believe it You make mountains new you make giants fall you use songs of praise to shake prison walls and i will speak to my fear and i will preach to my doubt that you were faithful then you'll be faithful now I am standing on, and I am standing on your word. I'm calling heaven down to earth. You will fight my enemies, and this will end in victory. And I will believe it. Yes, yes, I will believe it. You make mountains new. You make giants fall, yes you do. You use songs of praise to shake prison walls. And I will speak to my fear, and I will preach to my doubt. That you were faithful then, you'll be faithful now. That you were faithful then, you'll be faithful. And I know. And I know that I know that you never fail. Oh, yes, I know that I know you never will. Yes, and I know that I know you never fail. Oh, yes, I know that I know you never will. That you make mountains move. Giants fall. You use songs of praise to shake prison walls, and I will speak to my fear, and I will preach to my doubt that you were faithful then. You'll be faithful. You make, you make, you make mountains move. You make giants fall. You use songs of praise to shake prison walls, and I will speak to my fear, and I will preach to my doubt that you were faithful then, you'll be faithful now, that you were faithful then, you'll be faithful now. Hallelujah. You never fail us, Lord. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever, Lord. Hallelujah. You have a plan. Your plans are good and true and trustworthy. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. And it says it four times in the Bible. I'm going to preach a little bit on faith tonight. Is that all right with you? That's one of my favorite subjects. <laughs> and, you know, where it says the just shall live by faith, the word shall there has something to do with destiny. If you look it up in the Greek, it means destiny. You see, your destiny is fulfilled by faith. 
There are things or plans that God's got for your life that will only be fulfilled when you operate in faith. He is a faithful God. He's a powerful, all-powerful, isn't he? Brother Gail, come here just a minute. You were telling me about El Shaddai. We'll, we'll get right with you here. Just what did you tell me in, in the office about El Shaddai? Well, El Shaddai means God Almighty, but it refers to the idea that, uh, well, clarify, Elohim is the God of creation. We know that. But El Shaddai is the God who takes the things that are, would normally happen in nature and change it and work. An example was the death of Sarah's womb and Abraham's uh, inadequacy. They were not able to do it in the natural. But El Shaddai uh -huh, changed on. it. <laughs> and uh, when it's impossible with doctors or impossible in your situation, El Shaddai can change that. Uh, he hoped against hope. Hope against it. He, he grew strong giving, faith, giving glory to God. That's yeah. how he grew strong. Yeah. Giving, waiting upon the Lord, giving him praise. Thank God that he is the God of the impossible. He's the El Shaddai, the God that is more, more than, than enough. More than enough. And he'll do that for you because you're his child. You got me pumped up in the office up back here about that. <laughs> you inspired me, brother. Come on, let's worship him. still stands great is your faithfulness faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you never fail me Never failed us, God. I've seen you move, you move the mountains, and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there is no way, and I believe I'll see you do it. See you do it again. You made a way where there is no way, and I believe I'll see you do it again. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands, the great is my confidence, you never fail me, yeah. you never fail me, yeah. I never will forget, you are faithful. You never want to forget, Lord.
We want to remember all the good things, all the good times you brought us through, Lord. You are faithful. You rescued us. You redeemed us. You stepped. You stepped in just in time. You are our deliverer. You are our savior. Lori, Lori, let me ask you, how's Nikki? Is she coming along? Come on up here, Nikki. I want you to hear about this. Uh, Lori's cousin. I'll tell how, first of all, how close she was to death. Yeah, so my cousin Nikki is uh, 46, and she had COVID and had COVID pneumonia. And um, we got several phone calls saying, we've been called to the hospital, please pray. And we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed, and people all over the place prayed. And so we're so thankful. She um, is making a recovery. She's off the ventilator. She's starting therapy. And so we're so thankful. But I will give one quick testimony about the Holy Spirit and, and praying in the Holy Spirit when you don't know what else to pray. And the day after Christmas, um, we were home. My sister and I went home to visit my mom and dad. And we got a phone call just as we sat down to eat dinner. And my aunt said, please pray. They think she's septic. She's really bad. So <laughs> my sister and I said, well, we'll go into the bedroom. We'll shut the door. No one will hear us pray. Well, it's a small house, and they could hear, really hear us praying. And my sister started praying, and she started loud, and she got louder. And I said to her later, you scared me. <laughs> I said, I think things fell off of me while you were praying. But she prayed, and she prayed, and my aunt was holding the phone up to Nikki's ear, and my sister started to pray in the spirit really loud. And when she did, I could hear bells and whistles going off in the background. And I thought to myself, that's not good. That doesn't sound good. I worked in the medical field. And I thought, but, I, you know, we just kept praying and praying. Well, here, we found out later that evening that when Toby started to pray in the spirit, people came running into the room. The bells and whistles went off. Here she had a plug in her trach. The mucus had plugged it. And, you know, I believe the Holy Spirit revealed that. We kept praying, give the give the doctors wisdom. Let them say, oh, we don't know what to do, but let's try this. Or let the nurses say, I don't know what to do, but that's why we kept praying, that God would give them wisdom. And when she prayed in the spirit, that was revealed. Bells and whistles went off. People came running, and they were able to clear that for her because she was choking. So, yeah. But she's making progress. Yes, we love you, Nikki. Amen. <laughs> I hope she's watching tonight. Come on, let's praise him for it. Glory to God. close with this chorus tonight he is worthy of our praise having done all to stand lord we keep standing we keep believing lord you are the great i am the god that is more than enough be lifted up be lifted higher be lifted Lifted higher. We sing that again. Be lifted up. Be lifted up. Be lifted higher. Be lifted up. Be lifted. From our heart we say, Lord, let your train fill this temple. Be lifted up. Be lifted higher. Be lifted. Be lifted higher. Your name is life. Your name is hope inside. Hope inside. Restore the hope tonight. Your name is love. A love that always finds me. Always finds your name. Yeah. Your name is life. Your name. Inside me, hope inside me. Your name is love, a love that always finds me, always finds me. Be lifted up, be lifted. Be lifted up, be lifted. 
You know, when Lord was sharing, he reminded me of the scripture that says in Romans 8, 26, likewise, the spirit helps our infirmities, but we know not what to pray for as we ought, but the spirit makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered in meaning in articulate speech. So he prays through us. And in the literal Greek, it means he takes hold together with us against our inability to produce results so that he can produce results. We have weakness, infirmity, inability to produce results. But when you pray in the Holy Ghost, he takes hold together with us against that inability to produce results so that you can produce results. Don't forget that. Glory to God. Praying in the Holy Ghost has been such a boon in my life, such an inspiration to get me out of discouragement or to get me up to a new level of faith and inspiration. Amen. So we want to encourage you tonight. Be sure to pray in the Holy Ghost. Oh, wonderful Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness. We bless you, Father. And Father, those of you who, by the way, are, who are watching out there now, we want you to know God loves you. He has a wonderful plan for your life. And you know what? The presence of God can be right there with you, too. And when his presence is there, you'll sense a restoration, a peace, a tranquility. You'll sense joy because in his presence is fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you can do that right now. You can invite him in right now. We got a text from somebody, an email from somebody in New Zealand that prayed this prayer with us. So pray this prayer tonight with us and just say this in your heart. Heavenly Father, I believe with all my heart, Jesus is the Son of God. He died for my sins, rose from the dead. Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Thank you for forgiving me for all my past sins. Thank you for loving me, for saving me, and for a first-class plan for my life. In Jesus' name, amen. So send us an email or a text or something and tell us, that you prayed that prayer and you asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, you received the free gift of salvation. I want to correct one thing. That person in New Zealand, did not they just texted us and said they were watching. I'll just correct that. They, they didn't particularly get saved, but they were watching. So, But if you prayed that prayer, you're saved. You received the free gift of salvation. Amen. God bless you. Praise God. You can go ahead and be seated. And I um, want to just mention, oh, yeah, i got to put that thing up. Thank you. All right, my wife helps me out here a lot. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and give tonight. Did you hear about the two guys that were talking at work, and one guy says to the other one, he says, you know, I lost my credit card. And the other guy says, really? He says, yeah, actually it was stolen. I, I know who has it. He says, you do? He says, well, didn't you contact the authorities to try to get it back? He says, no. He says, how's come? He says, well, because this guy's spending less than my wife spent with that credit card. So <laughs> I'm just going to let him keep it. <laughs> so anyhow, well, we'll go ahead and give tonight. And we'll give as unto the Lord. And don't forget that men's breakfast on the 16th. That's, that's uh, no, no, I'm sorry. That 29th, 29th. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and give tonight. And ushers, would you go ahead and pass out the envelopes for us? Oh, Jesus is good, isn't he? Amen. Well, the Bible tells us to honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be full and thy vats overflowing with new wine. How many came in hungry tonight? How many came expecting tonight? Expecting God to do something? That's, that's good. There's a scripture that says, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. I hear that sound. The rain of what? The rain of his anointing. The rain of his spirit. The Bible says that the latter rain will be greater than the former. And that's talking about a time of harvest. 
Zechariah 10, 1 says, send ye the rain in the time of the latter rain. That's the rain of his anointing. And we're believing that rain, that anointing to envelop America. Amen. And we're going to take back America. You agree with me tonight on that? Amen. Brother, come on up. Let's go ahead and pray tonight. All right, brother. You know, we just thank you for these tithes and offerings. We ask you to use them for your glory and spread the good news of the gospel. Bless the gift to give our light. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go ahead and let us know. Sure. Anybody have a testimony tonight? You know, the Lord prompted me uh, here, I think it was last Wednesday or Wednesday before, to, to ask if anybody had a miracle. And, you know, I wish I had because there was a couple here, the Zabrowskis. Uh, we hadn't seen them for seven years, but when they were here a long time ago, they had a son who had leukemia. And uh, so this son, we I remember doing a lot of praying for this young man. And then we hadn't seen him for a long time, but they showed up to show me a picture of their son who's now 16 years old, totally healed from leukemia. Amen. Isn't that good? God is faithful. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to switch mics here. Okay. Well, turn in your Bibles, if you would, to uh, Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. I told you I was going to preach on faith tonight a little bit. And... Anytime I minister on faith, it ministers to me, too. <laughs> but I do hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Blessed be his name. Romans chapter 10 and verse 8 says, What saith it? The word is nigh thee or near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Notice it's in your mouth first, and it gets into your heart. As you speak that word, it's going to get down in your heart and make a difference. And notice he calls it the word of faith. This word right here is, God calls it, the word of faith. Well, he's a God of faith, isn't he? God responds to faith, doesn't he? The devil responds to our fears, which are just the opposite of faith. But God responds to our faith. In other words, faith activates God and fear activates the devil, okay? So we want to tap God's faith tonight, if that's all right with you, and realize his power that he has released at Calvary's cross and when Jesus was raised from the dead, Ephesians chapter 1, go there with me. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18. Oh, I like this. Ephesians 1, 18, talking about the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. Now, that's not our natural eyes. That's the eyes of our heart. The eyes of our understanding being enlightened that we might know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Well, you got to know what his inheritance is. What, how many know what your inheritance is? That this is the last will and testament of Jesus. You have an inheritance. And there's hope in that inheritance. The riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe. So his power is not to the world word, it's to usward who believe. According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he what? When he raised him from the dead. Power was released to raise Jesus from the dead. The Bible says he's raised from the dead by the glory of God. Another place it says he's raised by the Spirit of God. There is power that raised Jesus from the dead. And he says in Romans 8, 11, that same power resides on the inside of you to quicken your mortal body. Make alive your mortal body. 
So notice, it's to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. So what kind of, and then it goes on to say, set him at his own right hand far above, uh, in the heavenly places far above all principality, power, might, and dominion. So this is resurrection power, isn't it? We see it evidence then at Calvary's cross when Jesus is raised from the dead and the earth quaked and the rocks rent and the temple veil was torn into a four-inch thick temple veil from the top to the bottom to show that it wasn't any man that ripped it, it was God that ripped it. It opened up this wonderful relationship with him where we can go right into the very presence of God by the blood of Jesus. Oh, a new and living way was made for us. Glory to God. So don't let your faith rest. It's on the inside of you, isn't it? Keep your faith. Don't let it be dormant. Don't let it be idle. Because God has a plan for your life, as I said earlier, that it can only be fulfilled by faith. Use your faith on your body. Use your faith on your finances. Use your faith on your children. Use your faith on your family. Use your faith on your job. But keep your faith working. He says in, in, in Matthew 7, ask and keep on asking. That means don't let it rest. Remember it says over there, ask and you shall find. Seek, or ask and you shall. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. <clears throat> and so he says, ask and keep on asking. Don't let your faith rest. Well, I don't want to ask God for something little like that. No, go ahead and ask him. He wants you to. <laughs> Use your faith. Because what God tells you will bring increase. You need to begin to declare, this is my year of great recovery. Say that with me. This is my year of great recovery. What God has told you will bring increase. And will give you a new lifestyle. Give you a lifestyle, not without problems, but a lifestyle that will overcome in the problems. Enable you to win over problems and challenges and circumstances. You know, I often think back about my own childhood. And I think, you know, my parents were, uh, were nominal Christians. They went to a denominational church. And my childhood had its ups and downs. <laughs> But I often think how different it could have been had they only been born again and knew the principles in God's Word, knew the authority they had as a believer, knew the power of prayer and intercession, and knew their rights and privileges in Christ and had taught them to us. Things would have been a whole lot different. Isn't that right? Because, see, God's plan is a success plan. It is a plan to help you win in life. Once again, it's not void of problems. It's just simply you have an answer to the problems now. You have this resurrection power to help you overcome every challenge that comes your way. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Amen. So I think to myself, man, some people would just get saved and learn these principles of faith, how blessed they could be. Amen. God is no respecter of persons. He'll do it for them. If he did it for one, he'll do it for, for everyone. They can have this wonderful overcoming life. And we know that it says in 1 John 5, 4, it says, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So it's our faith that helps us to overcome. You know, Lee Strobel tells a story about, and he, by the way, is a, quite a prolific author now. But at one time, he really didn't have much. He had a five-year-old daughter that never saw him because he was never home. He was messed up. He, was <laughs> he, he, he would get angry, and he'd punch the wall and put his fist right through the drywall and just... Ang an angry person. But then he came to Jesus. And he learned the principles in God's word. And he taught them to his family. And his whole family got turned around. His whole life was turned around. And Lee Strobel is a, is a, a great, a successful person today because of Jesus. 
What do you have to do? Learn the principles of God's word. Learn that faith will accomplish anything. That God has a plan for your life. And you can have a debt-canceling anointing if you stay in faith, right? Faith is the victory. It's the way to overcome this crazy world and transition to the winner's circle in life. God has created us as creatures that operate by faith. So it's natural for you and me to operate by faith. It's a very natural thing. God created us that way, to be faith creatures. So miracles ought to be commonplace. Huh? Healings ought to be commonplace. We ought to be able to receive our needs met, emotional stability, and a sound mind. Amen? Courage and wisdom and forgiveness of sins and triumphing in life. Go with me to Romans chapter 12. Where does this start? Romans chapter 12 and verse 3. When you are born again, you receive a hunk of faith. All right? There's a measure of faith that you receive. Notice it says in Romans 12, 3, it says, For this I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, to not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. He's dealt to every Christian person a measure of faith. The Greek word is metron, and it means a portion taken off. It means a measure, a, a hunk of faith. And God didn't give you any less faith than he gave Oral Roberts or William Branham huh, or anybody else. He's given all of us the same metron or measure of faith. But then the Bible also says that this faith groweth exceedingly. So this faith can grow and it can help you overcome failure and defeat. Set you on a path for living victoriously with joy. In spite of the adverse circumstances, in spite of your failures and your shortcomings and anything else, in spite of your past, it can be, and this faith can, to, can do wonders in your life. It can heal you of early stage arthritis. It can heal you of late stage arthritis. It can heal you of cancers. Huh? But you've got to get full of the word. Amen. Now look at Deuteronomy chapter 7. Because we, we talked about this here recently. Deuteronomy chapter 7. We talked about God not being a man that he should lie. You know, the son of man that he should repent. In other words, God is incapable of lying. He is incapable of lying. And everything that he said in his word, he'll bring to pass. John, Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 14 says, Then thine heart be lifted up. No, excuse me. Deuteronomy 7, 15. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. In other words, God will take away all sickness from you. Not some of it, all of it. Oh, that's right. Chapter 6, go to Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to you to teach, or to teach you that ye may do them in the land whither you go to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's sons, and all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Longevity is in the Bible. God wants you to have long life. Amen. He wants you to live long, live strong, and live healthy. My wife and I have been saying recently, thank you, God, for making us centenarians. Did you hear that fellow that, that died was, uh, just died? He's 112 years old. <laughs> now, there, were, there are a couple of them now. Uh, one of them was overseas, and, but another one was in World War II. And they ask him, what's the key to your longevity? He says, serve God and be nice to people. Serve God and be kind to people. 
So longevity is part of God's word. Hear therefore, O Israel, observe to do it, that thou may it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord thy God of thy fathers promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. So, putting this word in our heart is key. Verse 18 says, And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers. How about verse 24? And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God, for our good always. Everybody say, for our good. Not for your bad, not for your <laughs> demise, not for evil against you, no, but for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. Glory to God. Well, Psalm 68, 19 says he loads us daily with benefits. There are benefits for serving God. Deuteronomy 8, 18. While we're in Deuteronomy, go there to 8, 18. Notice what it says. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he might establish his covenant. Now, the word power there is the Hebrew word lizard. But have you ever heard the word lizard? All right. Well, chameleon, lizard. And a chameleon adapts to the environment, and you and I can adapt to the economic climate that's in the news, even a negative economic environment. And God will give you creative ideas in the midst of that, won't he? Isaiah 48, 17, that he will teach us to profit. Isaiah 48, 17. So, there are people that will say concerning faith, well, I just don't need that stuff. Listen, you will always need faith. Well, I'm moving on to something else now. You will always need faith. Four times he said the just shall live by faith. I listened to the testimony of Jerry Savelle, who had a stroke, a major stroke. And they told him he'd never preach again. And he was paralyzed on his right side, couldn't use his right arm. And his daughter took him out to his garage where he has antique cars and antique motorcycles and everything else. And, and she helped him. He wanted, to, he wanted to start them all. He wanted to start all these motorcycles, start them up. So he, she helped him. And he, this, this, this right arm that he couldn't use, by the time they were done, he was using his right arm. And she says, Dad, look, you're using your right arm. And God had healed him. And he's back preaching the gospel now. Totally healed. You couldn't tell he had ever had a major stroke. Amen. But we need to tap God's faith, and it is that you can have what you say. What the devil stole, he has to return it to you. You have power over darkness, power over the curse of the law, power over lack. Power over discouragement and despondency. Amen. Turn with me to uh, 1 Kings chapter uh, 18. No, yeah, let's see. No, uh, 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. Beginning with verse 1. 2 Kings 6, 1. It says, and Elisha, or excuse me, and the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight, too small for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make a, us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And he said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was falling a beam the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, I lost the axe head 
and it was borrowed. Did you ever borrow something from somebody and then break it? Oh, my. How embarrassing, right? <laughs> they borrowed this axe, lost the axe head in the water. How many know axe heads don't swim? They go straight to the bottom. It's impossible for iron like that to float. Well, and the man of God said, where did it fall? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick. Just took a stick now and cast it right in the water, roughly where that place was, and the iron floated to the top of the water. Glory to God. So he said, take it up, put it out of his hand, and took it. Now, this is a working of miracles, one of the gifts of the Spirit. And I'm going to tell you today, I believe in 2022, God is going to do some working of miracles to keep you from being embarrassed. He's going to keep the body of Christ from being embarrassed by causing the gifts of the Spirit to begin to function. Working of miracles. The gift of faith, the gifts of healing. Rodney Howard Brown was having a service. Down there in Tampa, Florida, and a guy died of, of, of a heart attack right in the service. And he just went right back to him, laid hands on him, and raised him from the dead. Now, in order to raise somebody from the dead, you need all three gifts of the Spirit functioning. You need the gift of healing, the gift of faith, and the working of miracles. You need the gift of healing because once you raise them up, you've got to heal them from whatever killed them the first time. <laughs> right? So, notice he says, so I'm going to say that again. In 2022, God's going to perform the working of miracles and the gift of faith and the gifts of healings in order to keep you from being embarrassed. God doesn't want you to be embarrassed. Well, he'll go to work to keep you from being embarrassed. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Notice it says here, 1 Corinthians 12. It says, now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you be ignorant. You know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. And then he goes on to tell about the diversities of gifts and the manifestation of the Spirit in verse 7. And then he lists the nine gifts of the Spirit there. And you notice verse 9 says, to another faith, the gift of faith. Now that's really special faith. You see, we're saved by faith through grace, Ephesians 2, 8, but that is salvation faith. That's general faith. There is a faith, the gift of faith that comes upon you in a moment, instantaneously, for a particular situation. It just kind of drops on you. It comes on the scene to help you in your crisis. And you just kind of go into a different dimension when that gift of faith falls on you. Remember, it's different from salvation faith. This is a special faith that comes on you for a particular situation. When the gift of faith falls, you turn into another person. It's like Clark Kent going into the phone booth and transitioning to, to Superman. And if I can mention that again, that gift of faith came on my wife. And I believe it working of miracles and the gifts of healing all went into operation. And it was a 90-year-old woman in a beauty salon who died in that chair. And her eyes went back in her head, and she was, she was gone. And so my wife and the other, and one of the other Christian, uh, what do they call them, salon ladies? Uh, beautician. <laughs> <laughs> Tore that scarf off of her. 
and laid hands on her and said, you'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I speak life and health and restoration to you now in Jesus' name. Spirit of death, go from her now. We speak life and health and healing to you now. And breath came back into her. Well, of course, they called 911, and they came and took her to the hospital. And Dr. Schlemenda, who is an old cardiologist in Beaver County, after she'd been there several days, of course, he'd been treating her for quite some time for an aneurysm. Dr. Schlemenda calls her son, who's an attorney, and said, I've never had anything like this in my entire career as a, as a cardiologist. Never seen anything like this before. I've been treating this lady for an aneurysm for several years, and the aneurysm is totally gone. I can't explain it. He says, in addition to that, she had a heart murmur. And that heart murmur is down to almost nothing. Well, that attorney happened to be a friend of my brother, so he called my brother <laughs> and told him and said, man, I am so grateful to your sister-in-law. Well, she didn't do it anyhow. It was Jesus that did it. But the gift of faith, working in miracles, and gifts of healing went into operation through her, and she says, I didn't think about it at all. She says, I just reacted, you know, automatically. You see, it comes upon you in a moment for a particular situation to give you the power, that resurrection power that you need to change the situation supernaturally. And God is the one that's glorified. So He wants us to live by faith daily. If He can do something like that, He can take care of the supply shortages that are around, right? <laughs> Everybody's worried about the supply shortages and People are out hoarding toilet paper. <laughs> why would I can't understand why people would hoard toilet paper? They're gonna think they're gonna <laughs> run out of toilet paper or what? Huh? It might be wiped out, Gilson. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> and how about the gas prices? People putting gas in. Oh, man, look at these gas prices. This is terrible. Like in the city. You know, I, I talked to somebody in Pittsburgh. Oh, it's, it's worse in the city. These gas prices are terrible. Forget the gas prices. Is God not able to supply enough for you to put gas in your car no matter what the price is? Just trust him by faith, praise God. Stop complaining about the gas prices and just say, thank you, Father. You supply all of my need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you that you'll provide no matter how high gas goes. And I don't worry about it. Praise God. How I many you know you're not going to worry? You're going to have peace if you stay in faith. Now, if you get into fear, the peace is going to go bye-bye. If you stay in faith, you're going to be peaceful. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to God. So I'll say it again. God will save you from being embarrassed in 2022 by giving these gifts of the Spirit, nine gifts of the Spirit, precious gifts. This power is needed in this day and hour, church. And he will. it's not just reserved for the pastors and the church leadership. It's, re, it's there for every Christian to use. Every single one of you can function in the gifts of the Spirit. They are spiritual weapons, and we just need to expect them to operate. Amen? Hallelujah. If you respond with faith, you're partnering with God. So switch from fear to faith. Hebrews 11, 6 says, God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. But before that, it says, one must, he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And it is impossible to please him without faith. Think of that. It is impossible. You cannot please God if you don't have faith, if you're not functioning in faith. Glory to God. So I'm preaching to me tonight, too. I want to be pumped in faith. I want to operate by faith. I want to live by faith, too, don't you? I want to have a destiny that comes from faith. So if you lose fear, faith will work at its optimum. 
Remain in faith. And let your faith be bigger than your fear. Amen. I'm going to stop right there. You can stand. Glory to God. Good being with you folks tonight. Hallelujah. I like that scripture in Matthew 22, 21. It says, all things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Whatever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Father, thank you that you're a God of faith. Lord, help us to function in faith, not in a sense realm, but in faith. Help us not to lean to our own understandings, but walk in faith and trust you, Lord, tonight. Thank you, Father, that great things are going to happen in 2022 because we aspire to trusting and believing in you. Thank you for doing it, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Wonderful Jesus. Glory to God. Hey, will you guys have a great evening? Good being with you. Love you. All right.